coming here. So it's the first place in England that I that I see so many people join to talk Spanish. So I feel like I hear like at home. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's the first thing. The second thing, please excuse my English. I would I'm making a lot of efforts to be a little bit more on the table, on the tendable to you, but you know the Spanish and Cuban Spanish specifically is a little bit hard to transform in English. So anyway, I will try. Uh, the other thing is that thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Um, it was a wrong. Well, no, look at, look at, when I was drinking this beer, I just remained in why I'm here. <laughs> because my talk will be exactly about what, why it's very <laughs> uncrucial to make homemade beer. Yeah. 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 No, you have nothing, you will see. No. Okay. This is one thing. And the other thing that I'm pleased to meet here, the first Cuban in all my tour. Yeah. This guy. <laughs> I talk Cuban in Spanish with him a lot. Thank you too for coming. And the other thing that my talk, of course, is dedicated to you. But it's dedicated for the people living in my country and for all Cuban living all over the world. Because my talk is not focused to the social system. My talk is focused to humanity. It's beyond the social and capitalism system. So, my first question is why do we think differently to the rest of the world? This is the first question. It's easy to explain now, but it has been very hard to live. Do you remember 1959? The 1st of January, 1959, was the day of the Cuban Revolution, the first day before this 1st January of 1959 was what he, and when you wake up to that day, completely different, yeah? So, we know pretty well what is the meaning of revolution. In my view, it was of the most, more authentic, most authentic revolution all over the world. Do you know this date, 1962? I was born. <laughs> so I grew in the revolution. So my talk is not radical talk. It's not black and white. It's, it's Cuban life. So when the re revolution terms came in 1959, this was the model that the government adopted. Because at that time, the Green Revolution model was the most top model all over the world. So in a, in a revolutionary process, everything new and progressive, we adopted. And at that time, that is why we got the Green Revolution model. Which means high tech, high yield, and chemical technological package. Everything together means to be dependent of oil. Even though we classify like a socialist country, the knowledge of these people were marginalized, marginal was not taken into consideration because the only people allowed to think in Cuba was the scientists. So it doesn't fit in the Green Revolution model. We said and we say today we were independent from the United States, we say very proudly. Very proud of that. Really. I feel very proud. But 1959 is such an country collapse. Oh. 
1959, we import almost free from the socialist country 13 million of, of tons of, uh, of petroleum. In 1992, after the socialist country collapsed, look at this reduction, 53. The same figure for fertilizer, chemical fertilizer. And look at the chemicals in million of United States dollar. Was you can imagine our country was building up on the basis of oil, which came from the socialist country. Oh, what is disaster? No food in the market. Everybody making crazy. Mother looking for food for every place. I think that my, my friend is remembered that time. It was crazy. But the, the, the big number, the big figure is important, but this is the most important for me. I was living like you, in very high living standard. And suddenly my salary dropped down in less than three years, one month, from your standard to three dollars a month. It's unbelievable, it's true. So, that is why. I became singer to get tips to found my own PhD and to found my family. We were independent from the United States, but we, we realized that we learned to live from the socialist country. It was the same. So in the middle of the crisis, I received a mandate from the government, you have to become PhD. Yeah, really? Yes. So my mission, like a young scientist, was to obtain some new variety of crops in order to alleviate a little bit the difficult situation that the people have in terms of nutrition. We need something more nutritious food for people. I arrived to my experimentalization and the director said to me, it's okay, it's wonderful your idea, but we have not we have not nothing to give to you because we are in a special period, we have not oil, we have not chemical fertilizer, we have nothing. So I got very hungry that time. So I decided to move to farmer. A young scientist decided to move to farmer because he was very ugly about the conventional sector of making science in Cuba. I realized my own scientific model on that time, a young aspirant to PhD degree. My my mother was, was melting down completely. I was confused. But overall, I was feeling frustrated to work with Fama, a scientist guy, a young scientist. Oh, it's not science to work without agrochemical. It's not science to work without pesticide. It's not science to work without microscope. It's not science. So, from that moment I started to move a little bit my brain to the other way to see science and overall life. 